Hello, this is a review of the sauna that I've just bought. It's a four person queen corner sauna made out of hemlock. It's an infrared sauna, as you can probably tell from the heaters behind me. They're just like flat plates of. It's really, well, I don't know what the hell it is. It's similar to something that would go underneath a, a reptile tank to heat the reptiles. It's just it's obviously on a on a bigger scale, you know. It heats you in a totally different way to a traditional sauna. Um, I've always just had traditional saunas, whereby you go in, it's you know anywhere between 85 and 95 degrees. You go in and you can hardly breathe in. Now the temperature here is up to only 55. But because of the way that the heat's generated from here, apparently it actually penetrates you deeper. It can penetrate your skin up to two inches and therefore release a lot more sweat. As you can tell, I think I've been in about a quarter of an hour now and I'm sweating like a pig. Um, purely, I think, because of the way it heats you, not because of the heat. If it was a tra traditional sauna, just with a, a fire, with the rocks, and it was only, well, now 56 degrees, I would go in and think, God, there's not much heat here. But because of the way that this heats you, you actually sweat a hell of a lot. There are six heaters in this sauna. Along the two big sides, there's two quite big heaters, approximately a meter square, where you hang your feet over. There's two heaters, approximately a meter by 0.4 of a meter. Also, up each side of the door, there's a heater, which approximately 750 mil by 300 mil. They don't give out much heat, but they contribute to the overall effect. I went for this particular model because these heaters are carbon as opposed to ceramic. I'd heard there's a lot of negative reports about ceramic ones, how they're becoming outdated and how the, the, the heaters need replacing quite often whereas the carbon ones are more efficient they don't get as hot to the touch but they last a hell of a lot longer and they also deliver apparently a better heat obviously not ever trying out a ceramic heated one, I wouldn't know but this delivers a very good heat among the features found in this particular model are a touch sensitive pad so you can operate the heat and also the longevity i.e. how long the thing stays on from inside the sauna without you getting out there's also a car stereo sort of stereo up here to my left which you can plug your iPod in and you can listen to some nice soothing music whilst you're in here just as I often do. And anybody who knows me knows what's coming now. Nice. Of course you can go for sensible music if you wish. Down to personal taste. The stereo also acts as a radio so you can sit in here and listen to the match. Which is great if you cannot get it on the telly. This is the door here behind me. It's a you know, full size glass door. Either side of it, there's cup holders for your bottle of water. This thing above me here, where is he? Up there somewhere, is an ozone generator. Apparently, it freshens the air. There's also a little air freshening pad in the back of there, and it's got a little fan. You might just be able to hear it working. And it delivers a, like, quite a nice lemony scent. That's the stereo above me. This is the cable coming down, which just unplugged. It's like a little headphone jack. You plug your MB3 player in. Because my sauna is sited in a log cabin, which at the minute is unheated, I've actually added an extra heater to the sauna. Which is an oil filled radiator. Once the weather warms up a little bit outside, I'll actually take that heater out. I only put it in just to give the sauna a little bit of a boost, warm it up a little bit quicker when the actual temperature outside the sauna is very cold. 
I have found that when I've preheated the room, i.e. the log cabin outside of this sauna, um, it warms up a heck of a lot quicker. At the minute, with the temperature being pretty cold outside, uh, I mean when I switched it on it was only I think it was 5 or 6 degrees in the log cabin, which is very cold. It took about an hour to get up to 52, 53 degrees. The maximum it goes to is 60. So by sticking the little oil filled radiator in there, I help it to get up a little bit quicker. When I first got this sauna, I found it wasn't getting up to heat. It was struggling to get above mid 40s, that's centigrade. So I got back in touch with Red Saunas, the guys came straight out and replaced the thermostat um, and it heated up no problem at all after that, after sales was excellent. There's one halogen light above me and there's three LED lights on the outside of the sauna which I'll run through in a minute. Really under normal circumstances I'll just sit in here with the lights off I find it a bit more relaxing. I find that at the moment with the air temperature outside being really cold and the cabin that this sits in also being really cold that it takes about an hour to warm up which is pretty much what a traditional one would so that's not too bad. This particular model is 2100 watts so really it doesn't cost much to run if you preheat it for an hour before you get in, you get in, you start sweating after 10 minutes, quarter of an hour or so, and then according to the bump that's on the wall there, you're meant to stay in for about 40 minutes. Once it's up to temperature, as much as I really love hot saunas, and I'm generally the first one in, last one out, top shelf, I think when this was on 60 degrees, I would actually be pushing it to stay in for 40 minutes. It really, really does make you sweat. Although the air isn't hot, your body does not heat up because of the way that these infrared heaters work. As the sauna is only 2100 watts, i.e. 2.1 kilowatts, it just takes a standard 3 pin plug which you plug in to your, to your normal socket in your house. Ordinarily people would actually have these in a house, so the ambient temperature of the room outside of here would be, well, room temperature, 19 to 22 degrees, in which case this would heat up very fast. This is the touch sensitive pad here. You can set it. To whatever temperature you want. Obviously me being a bit of a heat freak, I'd just like it banged straight up to 60. And this controls the light and the little bit next to it controls how long the machine stays switched on for. Once the countdown reaches zero everything will switch off. I was actually going to purchase a traditional sauna, a, a, you know, a 3 to 6 kilowatt one with the rocks and electric heater and all that but um, it would work out pretty expensive to run it and also my wife doesn't like really hot saunas so because of the expense and also the fact that my wife and possibly my children didn't like the, heat, the hot saunas I went for the infrared sauna. Unfortunately on the first night that we were in my wife said I don't like this, it's too hot. <laughs> After about five minutes and she's never been back in. But the kids like to go in. When it's up to 54, 55 degrees, the kids will come in, spend 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, basically until they begin to sweat, and then they'll get out. Once they get out, I normally stick the tunes on and stay in another half to three quarters of an hour, depending on the temperature. Although an infrared sauna wasn't my initial choice for a sauna. I'm pretty glad that I made this purchase because I've been in, you know, saunas all around the world. They're basically the same. Red hot. You sweat and you, you can feel uncomfortably hot. 
Whereas in here, I would say that I do actually sweat probably twice as much. After the half hour mark, the sweat is literally running off me. There's two decent speakers above me. So if you're sitting here, which is in the, the corner of the thing, you get quite a nice stereo sort of effect. The seats that are in here are actually screwed down at the corners, but if you didn't want to screw them down, you could actually use this area for storage. The guys who put it up said that's often what a lot of people do, they'll store towels and all sorts of stuff in there. Apparently, according to the propaganda that surrounds the infrared saunas, um, they're much more effective at releasing toxins from your skin because of the deep heat effect and therefore the, the increase in sweating. I've been in, I think about half an hour now, and the temperature is only 57 degrees, but it's really hot. I'm sweating quite profusely, I'm not feeling faint, but I'm feeling very relaxed. The one thing is, with me, I neither drink, smoke, nor do drugs, so I don't know what's coming out in my sweat, there can't really be any toxins, unless it's from the odd bit of processed food I have. Temperature's just reached 58 there. I think I'm going to give it another 5 minutes and get out. It is really nice. I urge anybody who's contemplating getting a sauna to get a carbon sauna over a ceramic one and because of my experience if you trust my judgment use red saunas you'll find them on the internet redsaunas.co.uk they deliver throughout the UK I'm not so sure about worldwide but you can get in touch with them give them a go you never know I don't know how well this shows up but I've just got out the sauna because my video camera was starting to show an overheat button and it's pretty important to me as my hundreds of videos will testify so I thought it better be time to get out this, if you can see it, is the sauna it sits quite snugly into the corner of my log cabin This is the external control pad, it's got the same things on as the internal one, apart from you can switch centigrade to Fahrenheit here, so if you're in anywhere else apart from America you can have it in centigrade, if you're in America so you can understand what it means, it's got Fahrenheit. Before I go off to point out this is 100% independent review of this sauna. I've got nothing to do with redsaunas.co.uk or any other businesses that they might have. I just like to share my good experiences with people on YouTube. Thanks for watching.